Good evening, everyone. Okay, you know, we are, we are, I think as CMI managers, we have all been put to the greatest of tests. You know, a vision to hold this event first, right? The courage and vision to hold this event. The perseverance to do it despite all the odds. Uh, the empathy to deal with parking challenges. Yeah? Uh, uh, and the trust in, in what we can get out of it. So, firstly, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm Manoj Manan, I'm the pro program director with CMI, uh, and I will be your host and MC for today. So before I start, first and foremost, the guy who had the vision, uh, because when I spoke to him and I said, let's do an event, let's bring people together, let's see how to deal with 2022. He had the vision to make this happen. So please give a warm round of applause and welcome Mr. Te Wuntek, chairman of CMI Singapore. So Charter Management Institute has evolved. Today in UK, it is a 75-year-old organization. What do we do? Very simple. Making accidental manager become better leaders. Why accidental manager? You and I are promoted because we have certain content knowledge or certain experience. But nobody taught us how to be good managers. The school doesn't teach us how to be good managers. Doesn't teach us how to deal with uncertainty. Doesn't teach us how to deal with failures. The CMI movement publishes two very good books. The first one came out in 2020. It's about dealing with COVID. Why do we have to teach people to deal with COVID? Because we are working with people through virtual, hybrid working conditions, right? And we are dealing with a younger generation of people that are joining the workforce that has, value, uh, that has very different value system, very different working style. How do we engage these people? And COVID has also taught us about mental wellness. And mental wellness is a very important part of management today. We've got to look at not just the mental wellness of our staff, our co-colleagues, more importantly about ourselves. Because if you don't know how to take care of yourself, you can't be managers, better managers that inspire. Right? So this is a guide. Uh, and uh, uh, for those who have been invited, uh, you get those guides. Right? If you don't get those guides, please write to me. I'm very willing to share. And today, in 2022, we updated that and we call it the route to recovery. CMI Better Managers Route to Recovery. How do we deal with re recovery? How do we build empathy, trust, sustainability, diversity in this whole thing? Right? And talking about diversity, it is deliberate that we bring in more professionals who are women to be here today. CMI has a movement we call CMI Women. And why do we have to create a CMI Women movement? We recognize that maybe a lot has been done to bring women representation to the board. But there's still a gap on how many women are in executive positions. Because most of us have been working from home, one of the issues is getting our people to engage. So does Ben have any insights on the technologies coming up in the future yeah. that can help our people out there to be more engaged with our business in here, wherever Excellent. it happens to be? Um, in, in the employee engagement perspective, the next generation of folks, right? Baby boomers, Gen X, these are what we call transformational generation. They transform from an offline world to an online world. The millenniums and Gen Z, they are called natives. They're born into an online world, right? They're living it and they're doing it today. So if we don't embrace it, when they become the major purchaser, which by 2025, 
they will represent 70% of all the purchases bought in the market space. And by that time, they will expect digital to be first, right? Because they will be born native. Okay. So Hopefully you're saying a digital first employee experience. I'm, I'm saying that it will be natural for them that you don't really need to help them with that process, mm. okay? But the current generation of workers, we do need to help, right? Okay. But the future generation, by 2025, they will find it normal, right? They will Correct. go to this TV and start pinching it, and it's not working, <laughs> right? Correct. These are gonna happen, you know? Correct. And they will ask you, what's your avatar? <laughs> you know, and you're gonna say, oh, I don't have one, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you got to get on the bandwagon because they will be on the bandwagon. True, yeah. true. I think, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, it is true. In, in fact, um, as this next generation, especially now we have this huge challenge with the great resignation. So what, what, do you, what does this panel think? How should companies be responding to this challenge? Uh, is it uh, a four-day work week? Uh, is, is that the answer to it? Uh, is it flexibility? Is it... Is it work from home or is it work from Hawaii? What, what, is the, what is the answer to this great resignation challenge? Or what are possible answers? I don't know who wants to. And we even have the audience to respond as well. Okay, I, I'll give you a shot, okay? Um, I think it's all of the above. All of the uh, above. All of the above, right? Uh, why? Uh, during this uh, pandemic period, we have colleagues that um, really work from Hawaii. Right? Because it really doesn't matter. Uh, we have colleagues that, Singapore is small, right, so you don't, but we have colleagues, for example, that used to work in Bangkok or used to work in Tokyo, but their hometown is not in the major city, right? So they choose to actually go back to their hometown in order to work. In fact, some of them are still there, and we are wondering how do we get them back to the major cities to work. And they are there, some of them, for various reasons. They think they, they, they are negotiating and say, maybe after Chinese New Year, can? <laughs> Right? Because Chinese New Year is coming. Mm. So I think it's all of the above, right? And even when we try to draw people back to the workplace, and let me assure you, even though when the Singapore government say that you can have 50% of the workforce back in the office, not every company can manage to get 50% back unless you made it mandatory. If you do a poll, most of the younger generation, like what Ben mentioned, mm. let me tell you, they prefer to say that I'm able to deliver remotely and I'll show you how to do it. Okay. And, and it's very important, in, with the, especially the great resignation that is going on. The number one thing that the new generation is seeking after at work is autonomy. They want autonomy. They want to be there at home and not take leave when they need to open the door for the plumber or the electrician. Right? They still can deliver the work that you actually ask them to do. So even for us, uh, I think Facebook also announced they kind of delayed their back-to-office strategy or method delayed that. Expedia is the same thing, right? We are supposed to all go back to office, especially the US, we have a big campus. We are supposed to go back in January, but because of Omicron, we played safe. The CEO just announced we are going to delay it to be determined. Right? So even when we go back, when we, we told our, we, we basically get some feedback from folks because folks are so used to working from home. So let them have a voice, let them feel that they have a decision and they are empowered. Most of them say, let's give it a try, let's do a hybrid. Because we created an office environment. Why? Human beings are social animals. Right? But the office environment at this point in time, there's still a lot of uncertainties, like, especially in other countries. Right? Singapore government say it outright, right? but other countries, they say, they're not sure if you're unvaccinated, can you come back or not? They, they, they don't say it outright. But this uncertainty, wearing of masks, uh, social distance, when your pantry are stocked with all the drinks and all the snacks, suddenly they're gone because there's no sharing, uh, that actually puts people off a bit right, in terms of going back. But we are trying. Right? So we are actually going to a hybrid mode whereby certain days teams get together, right? then they have a chance to meet each other, interact, go for team lunches and everything, and then we see how then we progressively find the right balance, right, as we go back to work. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Yes. Hey, Wailun, over to you. Hello. Hi, my name is Wailun. So um, I have two questions. 
um, I'm working in the oil and gas industry, and uh, to be specific in supply chain uh, related business. So my question number one is related to uh, the transformation generation that you talk about. Uh, since we are in CMI, we want to ask for some advice on leadership skill or advice on managing the transformation uh, generation. Because whether you like it or not, eventually they will take over the workforce. Uh, the, some of the, genera I mean the, the older generation will retire. And how do we manage them? Uh, I think that is the, the first question itself. On the second question is, how do we retain the, the talent? Because um, or attract the, uh, I would say this transformation generation to join uh, our industry. Let's say mine is oil and gas industry, supply chain. I said an example, supply chain, unless you are in e-commerce or related business, on the platform part, it looks very sexy. Um, the young, young uh, generation like it. But you can imagine the back end of it is the logistic uh, work itself, which is not sexy, but it's essential. The younger generation, most of it will say, I'd rather work in McDonald's or Starbucks as compared to deliver. So, so how do we retain talent is the second question itself. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, maybe some short answers. Uh, Mine is a long one. Is a long one? <laughs> okay, so how, how do you support the transformational generation? And how do you attract people to the not so exciting jobs uh, at the back office? You know, uh, how do you uh, how how do you address and you know yeah? yeah I go for the short answer, right? The first uh, the first question in terms of um, uh, leadership, how to manage the transformative generation. I, I think some things are everlasting that it will not die, right? Uh, is we need to kind of listen to them. We need to show that there's empathy. So these are the rules that will never die because everybody wants to feel that they are listened to. Their ideas are. Basically, you are receptive to the ideas, so that's one part. The other part about when you say the supply chain, logistics, and everything, how to make it essentially is how to make it sexy. Okay, uh, I, I I really think I frankly I really think that that's where technology injection is very important. If you can't make someone, even though it's logistics supply chain, but you know that they are actually operating it with technology, you are basically boosting their market value and worth. So things like supply chain, IoT and everything, I think they are super important, right? So that they know how to use an app, they know how to monitor and everything. So they are just not like physical, physically uh, pushing things. In the oil and gas industry, it's the same thing. Uh, I think how do you actually paint a vision in terms of the company is also, or the industry is also transforming uh, to one that is looking at energy that's clean as well. And I think a lot of oil and gas companies are looking at that as well. Excellent. I have one question, uh, which is uh, come from online. Yeah, we have some, <laughs> which is: Do you think developing better managers are more difficult than developing better leaders? Uh, this is from Ben Tiong Ang. So, do you think better developing better managers is more difficult than developing better leaders? Okay. So, I, I want to enhance on what Yun Song has said, and it addresses the question that it, it, that person asked as well. So Yun Xiong ma mentioned a skill that is required today for leaders as well as managers. Um, that's listening skills. Okay? This is the number one thing that I look for for leaders before I hire them or uh, promote them into a leadership role where they manage people. Yeah? Listening skill is a forgotten skill. Right? And there are three levels for listening. Okay? And people don't know these three levels. And he mentioned one of them, right? So, which is, means he knows it pretty well, but he might not know the bottom two levels because he's not at that bottom two level, okay? The bottom level is what we call uh, selective listening. I type on my WhatsApp while I'm listening to you, you know, <laughs> in and out, right? The other one is, the next level up is attentive listening or active listening, right? I'm focused on you, I'm listening, right? But the third and highest level is the empathetic listening, okay? And if you know the traditional Chinese word, and Yun Xiong will laugh at me because he knows I don't speak Chinese, right? The traditional Chinese word that writes for listen, there are four elements. 
You have to listen with your eyes. You have to listen with your ears, obviously. You have to listen with your head. And you have to listen with your heart. Okay? And that's the, the empathetic listening. Now, the, the simplified Chinese one is you listen with your mouth, <laughs> which is the most terrible <laughs> character to have, but it is a fact, right? So you must learn the principles from there. And what are you listening for? Okay, that's why I said it's a long story. It enhances what he just said. You're listening for three things. You're finding out what is that motivation of your staff. And he only works for three reasons. And you have to figure out which of these three reasons are his primary motivation. Okay? Number one, not based on priority, because everyone's different. Success. They work for pay, they work for the title, they work for the company name, they work for the award, they work for the reward. Okay? That's one of the main priorities for them. The second priority is someone who works for learning, growth and development, exposure. They're looking for that. Right? And that's how you attract them. Because you're offering that. Not just money. Because all the time people get fixated and stuck on money. When not everybody is looking for money. Especially for the next generation. The third component. What is it? They work for lifestyle. Fun and family. I want to work a job, 9 to 5, 5 o'clock, I need to go home because I have an elderly father that I need to take care of. The priorities change. It's not for money. It's not for big money. But I need a job that gives me that flexibility. What does that employee want? Working from home? Working at work? It depends. There's no answer. But what you need to know is how to listen so well, how to ask questions to find out these three answers. Then you take yourself from a leadership, from a manager role to a leadership role. Okay? The critical question you got to have is, what is the difference between a manager and a leader? Both focus on P's. Right? It's a very simple one. The manager focuses on process. The leader focuses on people. Okay? Every single manager's job will have to do both. You cannot not deliver your revenue. You cannot not deliver your process that you need to do, your deliveries, whatever it is, right? But you have to spend time on leadership and you have to spend time on people, right? So that balance is the balance you need to find. And if you're off balance, you'll know that a lot of people are leaving your team and you're not attracting talent. You know you have over-focus on management and you have not focused enough on leadership. You have to have a blend of both. The more senior you go, the more you have to error on the side of leadership. Why? Because you are going to be the main attractor of talent. Where should Singapore businesses look for growth? Because you talked about the economic. Mm -hmm. So should it be Malaysia, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Vietnam? What do we prioritize mm -hmm. as we look at growth? Are there some sectors that we should look at? Is travel going to rebound so much that mm -hmm. you know, maybe those are the sectors we need to look at serving? Mm -hmm. uh, so what, is, what are your thoughts on it? Sure. Thanks, Manoj. Uh, this, uh, this question, oh, very one simple question, a lot of ways to answer it. Right? So one of the few, uh, a few things that we can look at, where do we look for growth? One thing is that uh, through, one way is through innovation. Right? Through innovation, leveraging on your, let's say, data that uh, I think Yun Xiong talked about and also Ben talked about leveraging the data, the consumer data and things like that. Uh, if that's too, too much and too, a lot of work, there's a lot of work, we talked about it earlier, discussed among ourselves, there's a lot of work. So how about um, uh, improving our processes, right? There's one way to increase your profitability. And another way is to look beyond Singapore, obviously, uh, what we talked about, uh, what you mentioned just now, Manoj. Look beyond Singapore, where are the growth opportunities? Where are the markets, big markets, big enough for us? So if you look across Singapore, the region is our big playground in ASEAN. All these countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, these are playground. Can our products and services can be sold there or not? 
I guess the key thing for me, Manoj, is that people are social animals. With all of the social distancing and all of the restrictions we have, people still love to get together to talk and to listen to folks who have some good insights on leadership. So long, let us stay together and socializing under CMII. The world is changing and what is demanded from managers and leadership is very different. So I think we can't see it as um, the way you operate can't be no longer square, it has to be more versatile. Uh, in the sense of you know blending in more functions, more processes, more you know how organizations are even organized these days. I, I think that you know to really cater for the next generation to ensure that there's business continuity. You know, every leaders have to start thinking about you know what does that mean for their organization.